Good morning. Um, I talk loud, so I don't really don't need that mic too much. Um, uh, my name is Roger Robinson. Um, I'm in Richmond Public Schools. I actually work down the hall from Raju, and I'm one of those teachers who constantly runs to him to bounce ideas off of him every day. But um, this summer, I did the seminar Tim Bar with Tim Berger, Understanding History and Society Through Images. And first of all, I'm not an artistic person. <laughs> you hear what I do? I, com I just complain about just being an art. I'm not. I was just so nervous of the unknown. And then I realized, wait a minute, this is what my students go through every day. And so I was just calling to take full advantage of this opportunity. And hopefully, by the end of the school year, my students will feel as comfortable with the images as I do. Um, let's see, uh, my unit was called Pain the Pride a visual journey of African-American life in 19th century Richmond. And we're going to focus on how Richmond became, went from the leading slave trading port in the United States, you know, through the Civil War, then to Jackson Ward, which was called the Black Wall Street, you know, because there was so much, um, what's the right word for us? So much um, prosperity in that neighborhood. Yeah, excuse me, I'm a little nervous right now. I'm just trying to do that. <laughs> Um, but anyway, my rationale. My rationale is the fact that this is your history, students. This is your neighborhood. These are the stops. This is your bus stop. This is what you walk by every day. This is what you see. So therefore, you should be interested. You know, you should want to know why that building is falling apart or why this building is brand new. You know, this, these are the things that are going on. Also, one of my, my rationale was skill building. Students in our district is identified in history that they struggle with them demonstrating their skills. And so if I could teach them how to demonstrate and analyze and build their skill set, ultimately test scores will rise, because let's be honest, that's the business we're in today. We have to get test scores up. Um, and so what I want to do is I want to build their skill set. Um, in addition, these are the 21st, this is the 21st century learners. They love technology. And so, I mean, I'll call them the selfie generation. You know, and so we're, I mean, part of our unit is we're taking pictures, we're going places, we're doing different things, and these are the things that they love to do, you know? And so I had all this, this rationale, this, these assumptions. I went in the classroom day one, this is what we're going to do. I explained to them, this is, we're going to take pictures, we're going to take field trips. And it was about as silent as it is in this room right now. <laughs> and they were just looking at me. And I was just like, oh boy, what have I gotten myself into? <laughs> but in the end, the day one, we started with our first image and we started analyzing it. And it was like a bomb went off in the classroom. You know, the kids were frustrated, they were complaining. And then I, as a fun reflective teacher, I said, that's my fault because I went in with assumptions, you know, and they were the wrong assumptions about my students, that they would be interested in this, that they would know how to use this graphic organizer, and that they would be able to, to give me a finished product from day one, not realize this is a learning and growing experience. So I said, I'm gonna come in with a board, and we're gonna have it looking nice, and everybody's gonna be impressive. But then I said, wait a minute, we're not there yet. We have to step back, and then we'll build to get into that point. So hopefully next year, I'll have a nice board that shows everything <laughs> that the kids have done this year. But um, that was issue number one. They just weren't interested. Issue number two was their skill set was a little more limited than I thought. Because I said, this is the self generation. They look at pictures every day. They can analyze pictures. However, they didn't know how to express what they were analyzing. And so I had to go back once again and look at my whole unit and start to make some changes. And the last one, part of my unit requires them to draw. And if you ever tried to get high schoolers to run into art to draw, then you know the problems I'm dealing with. I actually polled my students. Five percent of them actually said, we actually we like to draw. The, other, the rest of them were like, mm. <laughs> you know, So I had to change it once again. So my solutions to adjusting my unit was, I need to increase their metacognition. I need to make them aware of what they're learning. 
So I started implementing some of the CRIS strategies. If anybody doesn't know, CRIS stands for creating independence through student owned strategies within my, star, within my classroom. Um, I wanted to get that interest level up, you know? We took part of the unit talking about pride, you know, these great neighborhoods. Well, let's be honest, if you go look at those neighborhoods today, it's not where it once was. And so I had to, I, part one, go interview a family member. You know, someone who's older, and when I say older, I mean, I don't mean 20s, as they think is ancient. I'm talking about someone in their 50s, 60s, who was around during that transformation of coming, you know, from the pride to the, to the, what, the post-segregation ritual, which is a little different than pre-segregation um, ritual. And so they had to interview a family member. The graphic organizer is where I made the big mistake. That's what caused the breakdown. I had this great graphic organizer that scaffolded the students up on each level, but immediately the students looked at the hardest level question, I don't know how to do this. You know, so what I had to do was break it down into three different graphic organizers. There's easy, I don't say that to them because they don't, that's my term now. There's easy, there's medium, and then there's love, then there's hard. And so, therefore, okay, let's start off on the easy, who, what, where, where, why. And then take it to the next level, um, what do you think? And then by the end, you're able to make predictions and form your own ideas of what's going on. But then I run into the next issue of, they have to express that. So I started introducing some writing prompts. You know, and so now my students are starting to feel comfortable looking at images, whereas, in, you know, <laughs> Second week of school, like I said, it's like a bomb went off in my class and I tried to start my unit. Um, so part of using the seminar approach is um, one thing that's real big is collaboration. So we start, I started to build collaboration. And one of the great things that's going on right now is the State Museum of Virginia, the State Library of Virginia has an exhibit based on the main book of my project. It's just everything just came together like the education gods just put everything together. <laughs> for me to get my students into this unit. And so they're doing a lot, they're doing an exhibit called To Be Sold, Virginia and the Slave Trade. Then last week at a conference, guess who I run into? The director of the State Library of Virginia. And so she's giving me information, we're exchanging, and we're, I mean, we're running through some ideas of how we're gonna get our kids, well, my kids, more involved. And they've been a great help to the State Library of Virginia. Um, also, uh, as far as generating student interest, um, once again, the educational guards, there's that been a little Twitter war between our mayor and actress, Le, I hope I'm saying this right, Lupita Luanga, about, about my unit. Well, not about my unit, of course, <laughs> but about, <laughs> about the site that's the main focus of my unit, whereas the mayor wants to build a ballpark and the community, the people in the community want to keep it as a homage to the slave house that, once, that was once there. So now the kids are like, why is she tweeting about the mayor? First of all, why is she tweeting about Shaco Bottom? You know, and then now, bam, I got my hook. They're tweeting about Shaco Bottom because that's one of the most important places in America. And it's like, how so? And, and I got it. And so we're, we're rolling with it. Um, ideally, hopefully, Maybe when I teach my unit, she can come show up. But that's just a uh, far, far dream of mine. But, um, <laughs> staff development. Also, um, I'm not just keeping this to myself. On um, when we got back, I did a staff development on how to use these images, you know, to build for the history and the art teachers on how to get our students involved. It's like Tim says, images, like most teachers do, we find we have a point. Then we're gonna find an image to match that point, and that's how we teach. I wanna, we're gonna do the opposite. We're gonna find an image, and you're gonna use that image to tell your story or prove your point. And so that was my staff development was on, um, and I did that for the history and the art teachers within the district. I gave them the graphic organizer, <laughs> and some of them had the same experience I went through with the graphic organizer, but we all worked together to, um, to straighten that out. Um, and uh, also within the history department, I'm department head, so I'm spreading this through my department, the Virginia Museum of Fine Arts. You know, I've never been to that museum <laughs> before I came to Yale. It's a great museum in the city of Richmond. And then I actually went, 
And one thing they have, they have an exhibit called Forbidden City, Imperial Treasures from the Palace Museum. That's right to our World History One, World History Two curriculum. And so what I did was I introduced these concepts to the teachers in my department, say, hey, this is what your kids need to know before they go to this museum. So now we're departmentally, we're all working on the same thing. But more importantly, we're building the student skills. And that is our number one weakness in history right now. And so as we build those two student skills, we hope that test scores, well not hope, we know that test scores will go up because this is what the data tells us. Uh, so in conclusion, hopefully by the end of this year, my students will go through the same transformation that I went through, in which there was something unfamiliar. And I had my moments where I left seminar the first couple of days, like, what did that sound up for? You know? <laughs> but by the end of it, I mean, to tell you, the first two days, I was silent in class. <laughs> I had seminar, excuse me. I was silent. But by the end, I was, I was ready to go. I was given, you know, given all the information that I had in my brain. And so I want my students to go through that same experience. More importantly, I want them to increase their, you know, their metacognition so that they um, increase their test scores, which ultimately, I mean, I hate to say it, that's our goal right now, is we have to get test scores up. And so ideally my unit will improve test scores in, at my school, hopefully throughout the district. Right? Thank you.